representing the Canadian Maple Wings Association. I'm here today to speak with Glenna Scott Morrison, who was a flight attendant at the TransCanada Airlines Air Canada from 1958 all the way until 1988. Glenna, how about you tell us your story? Sure, it'll be, it'll be my pleasure today. When asked to tell about our experiences in the airline, most think of a humorous or dramatic incident, but for me, the struggles to gain equal rights for female flight attendants far surpasses the incidental happenings and has contributed more to improving our working conditions than anything else I can remember. The battle to be an in charge stands out as a major accomplishment, a rite of passage for female employees. To fully appreciate the significance of this change, one must examine the working conditions throughout the early years of the airline. By 1958, I had taught school for seven years, and I was looking for a change of pace, some new adventure, or the opportunity to travel. Joining TransCanada Airlines seemed an appropriate solution. The fact that the company policy required females to, re to retire upon marriage, or even at the age of 32, did not give me second thoughts. I intended to return just to teaching. I graduated as a stewardess in October 1958, with stars in my eyes, and enjoyed the new experience of flying around the country. It was an exciting time, and great fun. But as the years passed, I realized I did not want to give up this job when I married. By the mid-1960s, changing attitudes of the workforce and society in general were demanding equal rights for females. New legislation was introduced, and the discriminating custom of forced retirement for women was dropped. Thanks to a change in the Canadian Labour Code, by 1970, female flight attendants could be married, receive benefits, and have their jobs guaranteed following childbirth. However, not all females supported the transition, and gaining their support was an uphill struggle. The Canadian Flight Attendant Association, F or C-A-L-F-A-A, Toronto Base Executive consisted of myself, Renetta Gasper, Lorraine Gore, and Heather Richards, all of us attempting to educate the flight attendants about this advantage of attaining job security and improved working conditions. We argued it was necessary to end the separate seniority list for males and females and to adopt a single seniority list for all employees. We'll always be thankful for the many volunteers who spent countless hours organizing phone lists, stuffing envelopes, and attending meetings to get our message out. Many women considered flying a short-term job. Some were married to persons who left, felt threatened by the loss of salary, and others had not even given serious thoughts to the benefits of an integrated seniority list. From day one, the airline had hired males as stewards pursers who were in charge of other crew members. While the pursers staffed the large aircraft, there were too many males to cover the smaller planes, DC-9s and vanguards. Therefore, it was the custom that most, the most senior flight attendant would, would take on these duties. This soon became a bid for the females who wanted it. They would be known as acting pursers, so she was allowed to act as a purser and assume the responsibilities of a purser. And for this, she received a premium pay of 25 cents per hour, plus a through to training course. Pursers, meanwhile, retained separate classifications, separate seniority lists, and separate wage scale. While the Jumbo Jets were introduced in 1971, females were barred from holding the newly created position of flight service director unless they had accumulated 900 hours of acting as an acting purser. A female flight attendant who wanted to make a career out of her job and welcomed the challenge of an additional responsibility was prevented from doing so. Fortunately, society was coming to grips with discrimination in the workforce, particularly towards female employees. The Civil Rights Act in the United States was challenged in 1964 and was changed to eliminate discrimination in employment practices. Aware of these changes in 1965, Air Canada had removed the age, marriage, and maternity restrictions. With new job security now available, many flight attendants wanted to remain with the airline and continue employment until retirement. By presenting our briefs and lobbying the federal government with support from the Royal Commission of the Status of Women, we helped to force the elimination of sex discrimination in Canada.